Alright guys, welcome back to another video and in this tutorial what we're going to be doing is we're going to start learning the basics of event handling. Now up until this point what we did is we just made a really simple app. We had some buttons and widgets on there. However, whenever you clicked them, nothing happened. So these are like the dumbest apps ever made. You know, pretty useless. So what event handling is, is essentially how to make your app interactive. Whenever they do something like click a button, you can call an event and, I don't know, something occurs. So of course, it would probably be uh, pretty important during our app development process if we learn how to do this. So that's what I'm going to be teaching you guys in this tutorial, the very basics of how to make your app interactive so the user can interact with it. So what I'm going to do in this example is I'm just going to have one button and then I'm going to have some text on there and whenever the user clicks the button the text is going to change. Pretty boring but it will be pretty, pretty easy to uh, demonstrate what I'm trying to do. So probably shouldn't mention this. I actually started a brand new project with a blank activity and I named my project smart button but you can name it anything you want of course. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to open up this activity main layout and I'm going to delete this text view right here so highlight it and hit delete and the reason I did that is because I just want to drag a large text right there because it's a little bit easier to see during the tutorial and again I need a button as well so go ahead and take a button and drag it right in the middle so again eventually the user is going to click this button and it's going to change this text right here now whenever we're learning event handling of course what this means is we're gonna have to wait for the user to click the button and then change the text so we need a reference to both of these objects right here so we need to set an ID for both of these widgets so you can do these in any order but I'm gonna go to my text view first and scroll down to ID and right here it says text view but that is kind of hard to remember and pretty generic so I'm just gonna name this Bucky's text and hit enter name it anything you want but actually um, write this down or remember it because it's pretty important and for my button I'm going to change the ID to you guessed it Bucky's button hit enter so now again once once each of these widgets has an ID we can reference them through our code now the only other thing I want to do before we hop into our Java file is actually take care of these little warning messages right here. And you guys already know what these are. It says treat your strings as a resource. So click this, click the arrow, and let's just give this string a name. So for the text, I'll just name it like message underscore text. Make sure you don't name this the same as your ID or else that'll get confusing. So that's for my string and do the same thing for the button. All right, so for the button string resource, I'll just name this um, like the button text. So this will be the text that's on the button and hit OK. So now what I want to do is I want to change the default text for both this string right here and also the text that's on the button. Now what I can do is I can go here and show you guys that shortcut but your file that strings.xml file is actually under app resources that's what res stands for values strings.xml so for the button I'll just set something like um, what can I put for the button like click me Haas. So that's the text that's going to appear on the button. Now this right here is the default text. So it's the first thing that the user is going to see whenever they open their app. Now again, whenever they click the button, it's going to change. But by default, I'll just write um, something like hello. Since that's uh, pretty creative, you know, just hello. How boring is that? Now if you hop back over, you can see, okay, the default text of each changed appropriately and actually let me close out of this because we don't need it anymore so now that we have our interface set up let's go ahead and hop over to our Java file and the first thing that we need to do is 
we need to import a few things. So since we're going to be essentially writing some code to tweak both of these things, what we need to do is we need to import Android dot view or excuse me well yeah I guess I'll do it in this order Android dot view view and remember a view is basically any type of widget so after this we just need to import the packages for the button and the text view so Android dot widget dot button and import Android dot widget dot and I just remembered something text view. Now also what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start my emulator. So that should be ready by the time we are done with this. And actually let me just pause my screen recorder because I don't want sometimes when I run my emulator my screen recorder automatically gets stuck on that and uh, my mouse won't move so let me pause all right, so hopefully you guys can see my mouse moving right now. If not, and if I have to re-record this, then I'm going to uppercut my computer and then drop kick um, someone else's computer because it's really annoying when that happens. But anyways, all right. So we have everything set up. We imported all the stuff we need. Our interface is good to go. Now let me talk you guys through the basics of event handling. So like I said, event handling is essentially making something happen whenever the user interacts with one of these widgets, in this case, clicking the button. So event handling kind of has two parts to it. The first thing that we need to do is we need to tell this button, okay button, you're not just a dumb button that's sitting on the screen anymore. You actually have to sit and wait for something to happen. And this is called adding an event listener. So adding an event listener means that your button is now going to listen for events in this example a click so once we add an event listener is going to be waiting for a click now the second part of event handling is of course after that click occurs you need to make something happen because even though it knows it got clicked it would be pretty useless if nothing occurred so the thing that happens is called a callback method so again event listener is basically waiting for a click and the callback method is the code that happens in this case changing the text on the screen. So really simple to understand two parts but it does take a bit of code.